Well, hello, hello, hello. We are going to do a little news update here. So uh, as you could see the title, why Saudi Arabia's hidden biblical history could be at risk, along with some Israel news and a couple of other things that were um, just to continue to look out for. I um, want to thank you all for recently joining this channel. A lot of people, over 70 people subscribed in the uh, past uh, 24 hours. Uh, one of the biggest jumps that this channel has ever had. And uh, all glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But CBN News on the 14th, just two days ago, said why Saudi Arabia's hidden biblical history could be at risk. Some of the most fascinating sites in biblical history are believed to be in the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, including Mount Sinai, where Moses heard from God. Today, the area deep in the northwest corner of Saudi Arabia's desert is more populated by camels than people. But if Crown Prince Muhammad bin Saman has his way, this area, rich in biblical history, could soon be lost to a major developmental program. Uh, they're wanting to make pretty much a mega city. He's wanting to spend upmost of $500 billion to make a mega city, which might one day house up to 9 million people and rethink everything and how people live, work, and play. The project is touted as uh, the most modern, forward-thinking, and climate-friendly city in the world, but few people are aware of the deep biblical history of this area. Those who are aware wonder if the planned mega project would help or harm the historic value of the region. Andrew Jones has been studying biblical archaeology for more than a decade. CBN News followed him on a week-long adventure to some fascinating biblical sites, places almost everyone has read about but few have ever gone to see. He believes Mount Sinai is actually located in Saudi Arabia, very close to the proposed site of the new megacity. The biggest issue is that Moses, when he was taking care of Jethro's flock, and he had fled Egypt and lived in the land of Medan. Jones said the land of Medan is in the northern Saudi Arabia area. There is no archaeological um, evidence for Medan in Sinai Peninsula. And it was on one of those days when he was out with the flocks that it is said that when he went to the mountain of God. And in the Exodus, it says he saw a burning bush. Of course, we know God's word is true. Um, to me, if this really is true or not, uh, that Mount Sinai is actually located there, to me, we've been seeing a lot of um, Joseph's tomb uh, being vandalized, um, people denying the Jews going to it, uh, you know, people destroying um, just all types of biblical archaeology and things throughout the history. We've seen Syria and ISIS do things like this, destroy ancient artifacts. Um, but see, the book of Exodus chapter 15 says that he came to an oasis called Elam, where there were 12 springs and 70 palm trees. Those 12 springs are still there, and at least one is still used in that area. Jones is concerned that any construction project in the area could harm the historical sites, such as mountain range, he says, is described in the Bible. It wouldn't surprise me if they really would go through with this. I'll put the link in the description to read the rest if anyone wants to read it at some point in time. We kind of just read the uh, uh, key points. Um, but this is also really big news. Israel debate approval of Lebanon gas deal. Will it lead to prosperity or strengthen Hezbollah? This is huge. Let's go ahead and watch this. That After this ad. Jerusalem, Israel this week. Israel Prime Minister Yair Lapid agreed to a U.S. broker deal between Israel and Lebanon to explore oil and gas reserves in the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, November 1st is a big election day over there. Let's watch Israel's this. cabinet overwhelmingly approved the deal. Israeli Prime Minister Yair Lapid called the agreement historic and good for Israel and Lebanon. This deal strengthens Israel's security and Israel's economy. We do not oppose the development of an additional Lebanese gas field, from which we will, of course, receive the share we deserve. 
Such a field will weaken Lebanon's dependence on Iran, restrain Hezbollah, and promote regional stability. The driving force behind the agreement is the U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken praised the deal. It's going to benefit the region. Uh, and ultimately uh, benefit the entire world. I have another news article we're going to do after this about him. With very significant new energy uh, sources coming to market in the years ahead. And it really advances President Biden's vision of a region that is peaceful, integrated, and prosperous. It addresses a more than 10-year dispute between Lebanon and Israel over gas-rich waters in the Mediterranean. Lebanese-born analyst Tony Badran counters that the U.S. essentially brokered a deal with the terror group Hezbollah. It's the only meaningful actor in Lebanon. It is the most powerful demographically. It's the most powerful militarily. It's the most powerful financially. It's the group that's backed by, by state, Iran. It's the representative of Iran in Lebanon. Badran says Hezbollah basically got what it wanted offers literally 100% of Hezbollah's demands and cuts out Israel entirely of the disputed area and in fact even cuts into its territorial waters slightly by giving some of those to Hezbollah. Former U.S. Ambassador to Israel David Friedman tweeted about negotiations during the Trump administration. We spent years trying to broker a deal between Israel and Lebanon on the disputed maritime gas fields. Got very close with proposed splits of 55 to 60 percent for Lebanon and 45 to 40 percent for Israel. No one then imagined 100 percent to Lebanon and zero percent to Israel. Would love to understand how we got here. Now, finally. I'm sorry, got we, how we got here. Um, we're going to read an article here. This deal strengthens Israel's security and its uh, Israel's economy is what their prime minister said. Um, the Biden administration has not been pro-Israel whatsoever. Um, I, I just, I, I don't see it. And here, here's, here's something here too from Israel 365 News. Concerns arise over Democratic lawmakers meddling in Israel's politics. Um, Proverbs 29.12 in the Israel Bible, a ruler who listens to lies, all his ministers will be wicked. Very true. Pro-Israel organizations in the U.S. are privately voicing their concerns that two Democratic members of Congress may have meddled in Israel's um, politics by recently calling on opposition leader Benjamin to exclude any controversial right-wing political movements in his coalition if he should win next month. Um, one of them was Senator Bob Mendez, Democrat of New Jersey. And the other one was Republican uh, Brad Sherman of um, or Re Representative Brad Sherman of California, Democrat. They are voicing opinions and putting their nose in. Um, a lot of times we've seen this. We put our nose in things we shouldn't. I, I feel with as divided as our country is, we really should be meddling with trying to fix our economy, our inflation rates, um, you know, just bringing God back into this nation first and foremost, stop with all the ideology that they've been doing. But um, it says, yet Chancer noted that it is not typical for the U.S. to get involved in an ally's elections, saying that while he thinks the statement are well-intentioned, they veer in that direction of meddling. Now, I thought there's an issue with meddling with elections, but it's okay if we mess with other countries' elections, of course. Uh, November 1st is looming around the corner, and uh, there's a big election over there. And um, if they can get who they want in power, which, um, you know, they've been anti-Israel for quite some time, um, it's just not going to be good. We've already seen so many things right now. Um, Israel has been having their plate full with so much radical movements by Hezbollah, Lebanon, Syria, um, Iran wanting to do things. Um, you know, the only reason why Israel has not got involved in the Russian Ukraine is because Syria is a huge ally of Russia. And if they get involved, they might not like that Israel is bombing Syria. So we've got to really keep our eyes 
on what's really going on over here. And not only that, I shared a video on my community tab from Watchman Adam. It's really big. They are saying in Israel that they are going to announce who the Messiah is very shortly, along with the preparations for the third temple. We know that things are really heading in directions. Um, I was just doing a preaching today. Um, uh, I'll put a link at the end of the uh, thing. Um, when we know it's the end times, we're going to see religious, political, and Jewish things happening. And all three of these things are happening in these times. We're seeing religious movements. We see Chrislam is now a thing. And we see, of course, political movements. People are all meddling in each other's business. We even have other countries telling us how we should do things. And we see a lot of Jewish things between them announcing who the Messiah is and announcing um, you know, that they're getting in preparation for the third temple. And these are all extremely huge news that we have. But here's what I was talking about. They were just talking about Blinky. And this is from Israel 365 News as well. This was today the 16th. Members of Congress write letter to Blinky urging him to deal with the State Department anti-Semitism. Uh, Psalm 1-1 in the Israel Bible says, Happy is the man who has not followed the counsel of the wicked or taken the path of sinners or joined the company of the in, in, the uh, insolent. Now, here we see the U.S. Secretary, um, a bipartisan group of members of the U.S. House of Representatives sent a letter to the U.S. Secretary of State, Anthony Blinken, this week urging for an update on the investigation of the internal incidents of anti-Semitism in a department. This letter was led by Representative Grace Ming, Democrat of New York, Brian Fitzpatrick, Republican of PA, Pennsylvania, Kathy Manning, Democrat of North Carolina, Randy Walker, Republican of Texas, uh, Mark Wiesel, Democrat of Texas, Kathy Grainer, Republican of Texas, Ted Liu, a Democrat of California, and Chris Smith, Republican of New Jersey, who are all co-chairs of the House Bipartisan Task Force for Combating Anti-Semitism. The latter was signed by 75 members of Congress, reminding him of the multiple acts of anti-Semitism that have occurred in the past 21 months within the State Department and its foreign post. Um, the first incident refers to February 2021, when it was discovered that U.S. Foreign uh, Service Officer Fritz Berger, uh, if I said his name right, was running an anti-Semitic uh, uh, website that had called for the establishment of Christian nation state for years. Now, despite this revelation, this man still employed in the department. In July of the same year, a swastika was found cut in the wood panel of one of the elevators of Harry S. Truman's building in Washington, D.C. Whether all of this is true or not, there is a lot of things that are being exposed. Yet another anti-Semitic incident occurred earlier this year when a swastika was painted around a window shade inside a Shakir area in the U.S. Embassy in Bulgaria. Um, I'm telling you, a, a nation cannot stand divided. The, the Bible says it, and we are seeing so much um, division within our own, um, just our own nation. Now, this is from... End Times headlines. Global epidemic of cancer among those younger than 50 could be emerging. First ever cancer vax could be ready in months. Now they're doing this. Uh, this lady was uh, 41 when she told her husband that she could feel something like a bubble in her abdomen when she laid on her side. She had an ultra scan, uh, uh, scan and found that there was a spot, which led to blood test and a colonoscopy and found that there was a tumor the size of a fist. She had no pain and no problems with bowel movements or anything like that. Her husband, who works as an artist in New York City, by the time the doctors found it, colon cancer had spread it. It was stage four, meaning that it had reached other parts of the body and the family was blindsided. She had had a baby 15 months prior to this, had millions of blood tests. But when cancer strikes an adult under the age of 50, doctors call it an early onset case. These cancers at younger ages are becoming more common. 
a lot of people are dropping dead uh, a lot more than ever as of late, too. Now they're working on a experimental vaccine is based on the same messenger RNA technology that was used to create the CV-19 vaccination. Patient to generate T cells to have a body's immunity. So this is something new they are working on. And it's um, alarming. So here's the last thing I have. It's from CBN News. The CDC is using a chat site to use our tax dollars to target teens for sex changes. Witchcraft, all types of things, my friends. This is this is just... They're only supposed to be a center of disease control, but they're pushing LGBTQ ideology, sex changes, uh, talking about uh, polygamy relationships. That is, we did a video on it about NY Judge trying to pass it. Uh, meaning they can be married to multiple people at once, uh, two men at once if they're a girl, two men and a, and, and another girl, um, and married to three girls at once, whatever they want to do, and even trying to spread oculate. Q Chat Space is an online forum featured on the CDC's LGBT Health Youth Resources page and is running in partnership with Planned Parenthood. No. You know, um, that doesn't surprise me. There's no surprise here that Planned Parenthood is teamed up with them. Um, Because I've been to a lot of abortion rallies, speaking for life, street preaching for life, and most of the people at these are LGBTQ. They don't even uh, have any like-minded set that they even want to have a child. Um, But they're doing these messages about Sex, gender changes, witchcraft, grooming them by predators. Like treating them like, uh, man, they're coming after our kids. Um, They're using all types of things like they, whatever XE is, pronoun, black black non-binary queer, asexual, drag artist, uh, XE, XEM, they, them. Um, she, he, he, her, whatever they want, black, gender, queer, uh, gray ace. I've never even heard of that, man. They have so many different titles. It's, it's sad. I'm not, I'm not trying to make fun, but there's just so many titles. It gets confusing. It gets so confusing. And the author of confusion is Satan. He's the, he's the author of confusion. I mean, the, the Bible literally states, I mean, just. And a lot of people don't believe in the Bible, but that ain't my that ain't my fault that people don't believe in the Bible. But um, here, here we see verse twenty eight. Be fruit, uh, or no, verse twenty seven. So God created man in His own image, in the image of God He created him, male and female He created them. This is in Genesis one, of course. It doesn't say anything about you know He created seventy thousand different. Uh, pronouns, man. It's just, I, I, I really feel for a lot of these kids because some of these kids are just, they're brainwashed before they even get a thought process of, um, knowing anything. I mean, it's just immediately cram in whatever ideology they want to put in their brains. And it's, it, it, it's sad. It's sad because this is just, getting worse and worse by the year it it just keeps it keeps adding up that they keep on doing this and um you know if we're here in the next what 20 years it, it it's going to be really crazy um the way people act think operate um it's going to be such a different world. It's going to be a world that a lot of people um, are not going to want to be in. I remember what, maybe eight years ago since my dad had passed, my dad just uh, said he he doesn't want to be here for the things that are coming to this world. And um, 
he wasn't saying this uh, being depressed, but he was on his deathbed and he was spending a lot of time with the Lord. And I, I think he kind of knew the way things were going, that um, it was just changing in a direction that he didn't want to be part of. But nevertheless, we are here as individuals to witness the gospel of Jesus Christ. If anyone is having any type of confusion in their life or, or just anything that is going on, hold on and cling on to Jesus and be free today. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 1 to 4 says, Moreover, brethren, I declare to you the gospel which I preach to you, which also you received and in which you stand, by which also you are saved if you hold fast that word which I preach to you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. My friends, we are in perilous times. Tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern, I have the second great dying. We're going to be speaking about biblical prophecy, about things that are happening uh, I just did a thing yesterday. One billion snow crabs vanished. 600 Levites, it was another video we did, 600 Levites performing the rituals for the third temple to do the music like Moses and Aaron. Also, they're practicing water litigation for the third temple. I've done a video on here where they have prepared incense for the third temple. They are restoring stones for the third temple. They are making blue dye for the third temple. They have brought the red heifers for the third temple. There's so much things happening. And like I said in the beginning of this, I shared on my community tab page, Watchman Adams video. Israel rabbis are saying that they are going to announce who the Messiah is very shortly. Keep your heads up. Keep looking up. May God bless you all.